heading north from the plains of Pakistan and into the foothills of the Hindu Kush mountains lies one of the country's most spectacular regions. Chitral's peaks are so high and remote that its summits seem to touch the heavens. Isolated in its deep valleys are colorful, independent tribes, such as the Kalash people, with unique festivals and traditions. The Chitralis are proud and hospitable people with an abiding passion for polo. Most villages have a team. Matches are contested on the highest polo grounds in the world. Many ancient ways of life are preserved here. But also protected among these towering peaks is one of Pakistan's hidden gems, Chitral Gol National Park. It's renowned for its dramatic landscapes, treacherously steep cliffs, and for one extraordinary animal in particular, the Markor, the cliff walkers of Chitral Gol. Chitral Gol is one of Pakistan's least known national parks. It's tucked away in the Hindu Kush mountains, one of the most inaccessible parts of the country. At close to 8,000 hectares, it's not the largest of parks, but what it lacks in area, it makes up for in dramatic scale. There is a nearly three kilometer drop between the highest peaks and the valley floor. The winters are long and cold, and the summers are hot and dry. But in spite of the challenging climate and rugged landscape, animals and plants cling on in many extraordinary and resilient ways. On the upper slopes, there is so little soil that deodar trees spread their roots over the resistant rock. Anchored like this, Diodars can reach 25 meters in height, but it takes them centuries. Slowly but steadily, some live for a thousand years or more. The stately diodar is Pakistan's national tree. In fact, Chitral Gol National Park is a sanctuary to four of the country's national treasures, including the national bird, the jakur or rock partridge, the national plant, jasmine, and, most iconic of all, the markor. The unsung heroes of the park are the invertebrates, the workers who recycle life's basics and help create the little bit of mountain soil on which all other plants and animals depend. From the top of the valleys to the bottom, late summer is the time for life to flourish. A great variety of plants have found ways to hardy themselves against the cold winters and to take advantage of the warm summers. When they set seed, there's an abundance of ripening fruits on which Chitral Gull's many species of bird will fatten up. Chitral Gull's breathtaking landscape makes big demands, so animals have to make the most of any break they can get. 
The steep-sided valleys create powerful upcurrents of hot air, called thermals. Heavy birds, such as Lamagaya vultures, take advantage of this rising air to gain height more easily. Up here, they've a better chance of spotting their next meal. Even the mighty golden eagle is pushed to extremes. Like all large animals, it must cover huge distances to find enough to eat. Secretive, rarely seen wildcats, such as a lynx mother with her two cubs, might have to travel tens of kilometers to feed the family. Wolves are marathon travelers too. They patrol and scent mark along the boundary of their home range to keep rival wolf packs out. Sheer cliffs are off limits to most predators, which is why sure-footed markhor use them as safe havens. But even they make mistakes. If a markhor falls to its death, it's an easy meal no one overlooks. The vulture isn't always the first to arrive, but it easily bullies the ravens to one side. A shift in the weather heralds the end of Chitralgol's harsh summer. It's when the park's most celebrated resident, the Markor, face their greatest challenges. From Chitral Gull's highest peaks, autumn chill descends through the valleys. It's the signal for Markor to move downslope in readiness for the bitter winter ahead. Markor are one of the largest wild goats in the world. Males can weigh over 100 kilos, and their impressive corkscrew horns are often over a meter long. Females are much smaller, but this can be an advantage when the markhor move into the stands of holly oak, which provide them with a staple diet of acorns and leaves at this time of year. The lightly built females can climb right into the trees to reach the younger, more succulent leaves growing on the tips of the branches. Their split toes and the sensitive leathery soles on their feet give them excellent grip. The very same balance and agility that allows them to leap so effortlessly across sheer rock walls. The males are powerfully built and their balance is extraordinary too, but they're simply too heavy to climb a tree. Instead, they thrash their heavy horns to try to dislodge the leaves and acorns. Once the food has fallen, size trumps agility. Since leaving the high altitude summer pastures, they'll have been spending eight to 12 hours each day looking for something to eat among the rocky crevices and gullies. Females, together with this year's young, huddle into small herds as much for safety as anything else. There's always danger about.
The older animals know their way around the landscape. The youngsters need to learn, not just escape routes, but where to find an essential ingredient that's missing from their normal diet. It's on the other side of this mountain stream. Fast flowing meltwater has cut through the rock, exposing banks of mineral salts. The markhor need to lick at the rock salt to make sure they get the supplements they need. It's vital they stay healthy for the difficult months ahead. In the first two weeks of December, the male Marco face their toughest time of the year. The males mostly live alone, but now they seek each other out. Tentatively, nervously, they will be sizing each other up. After days working out who has the best chance of mating with the nearest females, battle commences. It's not just their size and power that counts. The terrain and their choice of standpoint can be make or break. The stakes are so high, the tension and clashes continue well past sundown. A clear winner will mate with up to 30 females. The loser faces an uncertain future. With snow already dusting the higher slopes, life's about to get even harder. Winter is a punishing time of year. Meters of snow can blanket Chitrogal. The Markur remain at lower elevations, still reliant on the Hollyoaks to keep hunger at bay. but they'll have to walk long distances across icy rock to find new sources of food. They regularly need to leave the park and feed in the adjoining valleys. And this is when wildlife and the people living around the boundary of Chitral Gol National Park together feel the pinch.
Chitrali people are very resilient. But when heavy snowfall blocks the mountain passes, they're more or less cut off from the outside world. Because it's so cold, fuel is in short supply. Families rely on what they find around them for basic needs. Like Waka Muhammad. Especially in winter, we rely on wood for cooking and staying warm. Many trees around the park have already been felled. The only trees left here are in the national park. And if they were to be cut down too, the forests would become bare and the animals would leave. It's not just wood cutting that affects the Markur. It's hungry livestock too. Especially when nomadic herders, Gujas, bring their herds into the area. Decades ago, there was enough food for everyone. Now, it's a different story. As the winter wears on, the grazing wears out. Towards the end of winter, the Gujas even enter the national park to cut boughs of evergreen holly oak as fodder for their animals. Keeping their animals alive is exhausting work. Hashim's 60 goats need a huge amount of food a day. They're his family's entire livelihood, but he knows the area is suffering too. These are the same holly oaks that Markor and other wildlife depend on. We've been coming here for 30 years. It would be impossible to survive here after a year or two. We are bound here at the moment. The forest is near to its end, and after that we will need to go beyond this place. The nomadic Gujas will move away, but local herders have no other option but to stay here. Their problems are mounting, and they need longer-term solutions. Overgrazing around the national park has had other knock-on effects too. It's reduced the amount of food for Markor, and herders mostly blame snow leopards for picking off domestic animals instead. Predators have even stalked right into villages to attack herds gathered in stone corrals. Traditionally, villagers have protected their animals in open enclosures. The old corral had low walls, which meant that wild animals attacked our livestock, and we suffered huge losses. The Snow Leopard Foundation keen to improve the prospects of both snow leopards and herders, has stepped in to help. Firstly, they have helped fund new corrals. Tall, sturdy stone walls prevent predators from getting in. And the netted roof allows good ventilation for the animals, helping them to stay healthy. They fatten up much better in here. If one or two corrals are built in each community, people would be very happy and these livestock would stay safe. The loss of any animal is a blow, but a recent survey conducted by the Snow Leopard Foundation has revealed that relatively few livestock are killed by wild predators. The results of that survey shows that the number of animals that die from diseases is very high compared to those that are killed by wolves or snow leopards. It suggests that well over 60% of livestock deaths result from ill health and malnourishment. To address this problem, the Foundation is funding and teaching herders how to keep their animals vaccinated against disease. In olden times, people did not get their animals vaccinated. Today, they have it done a lot. 
herders are already reaping the rewards of fitter, healthier animals. There has been a big increase in the amount of milk the owners are getting from these animals. The animals become healthy, their milk production increases, and their meat gets better. As a result, people are benefiting economically. Through raising awareness, and with relatively simple measures, the day-to-day -day life of local herders has improved. Now, the mortality rate in herds has decreased a lot. Now, diseases don't spread, and our herds are safe from wild animals. But there's a wider benefit. If more animals survive and are healthy, then shepherds can make a better living with fewer animals. Smaller herds mean less overgrazing. And that improves the future for wildlife in the area too. Land that was previously exhausted can be rested and trees and shrubs allowed to grow back. The well-being of the national park is clearly tied to that of the people who live around its borders. For some locals, the mutual benefits are already very clear. I am proud of the fact that I hail from a village next to this national park. I am a part of this national park. Isra feels the direct benefits of living next to this national asset because since 2004 he's worked within it as one of 10 community watchers who help protect it. We wake up early every morning and patrol the entire area to protect it. We ensure that nobody comes from outside to cut the wood, to destroy or take away the medicinal plants, or harm the wildlife, such as the markhor. Ever since I've become a part of the wildlife department, my life has completely changed. The monthly salary I receive is quite enough for me to support my children and myself properly. But there are many other ways in which local people can engage with and benefit from conservation. In the Chitral Town Market, traders are doing brisk business selling tree saplings, which they've grown. Some customers buy trees to make their gardens beautiful, but it's also important to replant hillsides that have been logged or overgrazed, as Akbar Ali well knows. The heritage that has been lost it is our duty to replenish it. If we are going to clear it away unchecked, then there would be floods and other natural disasters. Landslides and floods have increased in recent years. Planting trees helps to bind the soil and controls the runoff of heavy rain. If less topsoil ends up in the rivers, the yield from crops improves too. As well as easing the pressure on the landscape, replanting the hillsides offers ways to make money. As these trees mature, they will provide wood for fuel and fencing, a variety of high-value orchard fruits, and even fodder for livestock. Some local plants have medicinal properties, Artemisia, for instance, can be used as an antiseptic remedy, and growing them could provide an extra income stream. Another source of revenue is the hunting of large male markhor, but only in some areas outside the national park. Trophy animals, older animals with impressive horns, are raising hundreds of thousands of dollars in hunting fees. But these operations must be carefully organized and overseen so that the financial benefits are spread fairly throughout the area. For that to happen, general awareness needs to be raised to understand how to keep the Markor population healthy and how caring for the surrounding area helps everyone. If people gain awareness, they will automatically protect it because it will be embedded in their minds that this is for their benefit. Akbar Ali believes the best people to protect the park and its surrounding area are the locals themselves. 
The young generation would do this. Who else? No outsider would come and protect it. We have to be here, live here, die here. That's it. Therefore, it is our obligation to protect it. The chief conservator of the province, Safdar Ali Shah, knows that young people are vital to the future care of such a large, remote area. We run an education and awareness program at schools where we give lectures to ninth grade students and give them the message that since you will be the policymakers of tomorrow, politicians of tomorrow, this country's decision making will be in your hands. So this is a message to our youth, that they strengthen our grip. They should become our eyes, ears, hands and feet. Their lives could be enriched from the long-term protection of Chitral Gaul. We have to transfer it to our future generations, just the way it is. So that they will be happy seeing it as it is. What else could be of greater happiness to us? It's essential that local communities engage their hearts and minds with this challenge, because the day-to-day -day protection of such vast, rugged terrain is a daunting job. Every day, and in all weathers, just a small handful of staff walk miles and miles, patrolling the park boundaries to make sure animals and plants are kept safe. These wardens and watchers need more resources and equipment, especially better ways for the staff to stay in contact with each other. Mobile phone signals might not reach such deep ravines. And if problems arise, the guards need to mobilize quickly and effectively. The job can be dangerous. On top of this, and even though the Wildlife Department has limited funds, they need to monitor numbers of markhor and other animals that live in the park. Together with local wardens and watchers, they climb to special vantage points from where they can see far and wide. Twice a year we conduct surveys of all the wildlife. That includes birds, predators and other animals. There is also the lambing survey we conduct in July, focusing on markhor alone, to find out how many new fawns have been born. These surveys are helping to build up a more accurate picture of what lives in the park. Against all the odds, and thanks to the help of community watchers like Isra, the Marco population has risen from just over 600 in 2005 to nearly 1,400 in 2015. We have the community watchers on board with us. Therefore, our manpower has increased, protection has improved, and so the population has increased in Chitral Gol. With wildlife numbers on the up, the park could become a great draw for tourists. When we come from the cities, we are coming to feel something different. We are coming to breathe a fresh air. I didn't know much about the natural park, but now I'm here and I see these trees, the mountains, and I'm so inspired. The whole view, it's beautiful. Coming here is like standing in a heavens. It gives you a serenity, like you can feel like you are out of the world.
Because Chitral is so remote, it's been very hard to get to. Traffic and supplies need to be brought over mountain passes on weather-beaten roads. But big change is on the way. A much-needed tunnel is under construction, cutting through the mountain, which will improve access and boost visitor numbers. As the Lawari Tunnel gets down to the finishing stages, countless tourists would come then because the environment here is pleasant, the people receptive. Tourists are already arriving to take advantage of Chitralgol's stunning scenery and bringing much needed revenue into the region. But unregulated, it could cause new problems too, of mindlessly cutting wood for campfires and much more rubbish. We have come to visit this beautiful place. The environment is clean here. However, it makes me sad that people like us come here and leave behind all this rubbish. This is sad. They should not do this. All visitors have a responsibility to clean up after themselves. We are in the process of developing a code of conduct for the tourists. Before entering the national park, people should know about the basics of the park, our prohibitions and the do's and don'ts. But at least there are good foundations to build on. It is a reflection of our success that the areas where there were only footprints of these animals, but none were seen, a substantial number of these are found in those areas these days. Obviously, I feel proud, and I feel the people of Chitral should feel proud of that. Wildlife is an indicator of the health of an ecosystem. Chitral Gull is an amazing success story and therefore a positive sign. With limited resources and in challenging terrain, staff have done wonders improving wildlife numbers within the park. Good lessons have been learned, especially the positive involvement of local people. Valuable experience which can be shared elsewhere. The next generation are well placed to carry on the good work. If they learn how special they are, and how their lives will be enhanced through care of their surroundings. Then both they and the extraordinary cliff walkers of Chitral Gol can flourish well into the future.